Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 11th of January 2021 and the time has just gone 8.59 GMT. And it's been a reasonably negative start to the European trading session. Uh, we had a mixed session uh, in Asia overnight. Uh, we've had a pullback uh, in European uh, equity markets uh, today. In the grand scheme of things, the, the losses that we're seeing in the Euro, in the European in the in, in Europe are relatively small in comparison to the very impressive gains that were racked up last week. Uh, last week we saw the FTSE at a hit a ten month high. We had an all time high on the DAX. The major US indices they they, they set all time highs. At uh, the back end of last week, uh, the Nikkei two two five hit its highest uh, in three dec in thirty years. So you know back back in the last week uh, we we did have a very strong. Uh, but sentiment, bullish sentiment was very strong in equity markets. Now we seem to have a bit of a pullback. Um, it seems to me that um, traders are a little kind of concerned about the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis. They're kind of back a bit to the forefront, but you know, keep in mind that there's going to be ebbs and flows in relation to this. Um, the really kind of story of the last few days has been that um, the bullish sentiment has been fueled by the belief that the future Biden administration uh, is going to introduce additional stimulus packages uh, as a way to kind of boost the economy. Now, keep in mind, uh, at the back end of December, the Democrats and the Republicans agreed a $900 billion uh, COVID-19 um, crisis relief package, but, the, but before the but before the deal was struck back in, say, October, November, the Democrats are pushing for a much larger amount. So the view is that we're going to have potentially we're, we're going to see further stimulus coming from the Democrats. Now that the Democrats have control, not only have they, do they have the presidency, they already had control of the, the lower house, and uh, they now have a tiny m m majority in the upper house. So they have control of the U.S. government. Hence, why we saw a major moves uh, in the global stocks, particularly U.S. stocks, at the back end of last week. Uh, also, at the back end of last week, in a reasonably mixed uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls report, uh, the headline figure was very disappointing, but there's a positive revision to the, to the November's reading, and the unemployment rate remained. You know, people. the report was, on one hand, it wasn't so bad. That would we kind of really spur on. We need more stimulus, but at the same time, it wasn't so good to say, oh, you know what, the U.S. economy doesn't need extra stimulus. So it's kind of somewhere in between. Um, as always, with this video, what I'll do is I'll take a look at the week ahead article. I'll run through the, uh, the major uh, economic and corporate stories of the week, and then I'll go through the major uh, major markets, indices, currencies, and commodities. Please, please. Now, the, the week ahead art, article can be found on our website, <coughs> excuse me, uh, under cmcmarkets.com, under insights, and then, and then from there, latest news and analysis. So overnight, we had um, uh, CPI figures and also PPI figures from China. Both showed, uh, both came in better than expected. So it would seem that demand is a touch, uh, is ever, ever so slightly on the rise in China, albeit it's coming from a fairly low base. Later this week on Thursday, we're going to have uh, trade data from China. And that's going to be really important because it's going to give us an indication, the imports component will give us an indication of what in turn demand is like in China. Now, in many regards, China has made a decent recovery from the COVID-19 crisis, the kind of huge economic collapse that happened in the back of it. But, you know, for example, retail sales aren't, aren't, um, aren't back to kind of pre-COVID levels. And this would be a good indication of what is internal demand like in China. Uh, on the extra and the exports component of Chinese of the Chinese trade numbers, um, that's obviously the kind of global external demand. But keep in mind, China is a major uh, manufacturer and supplier of um, personal protective equipment PPE. So the last few months, a lot of the the the, the, the good uh, exports readings are often down to the fact that governments around the world are buying in healthcare or kind of medical and healthcare items from China. JD Sports, uh, those figures were actually brought forward. They were announced uh, this morning. They were they were originally penciled in uh, for Tuesday. It's quite annoying how companies do that. It makes planning calendars quite tricky. Um, but nonetheless. Uh, they had a good set of numbers today, and um, they, they were optimistic that they, they can exceed um, the current market expectations. So their share price hit a fresh all-time high this morning, but it's ever so slightly pulled back since. Um, sticking with the retail theme, ASOS have first quarter numbers coming out uh, on, on Wednesday. 
Um, on Wednesday, we, we have uh, Persimmon, the, the house building company. They have their uh, quarterly, fourth quarter numbers. Uh, following on, we'll have um, fourth quarter numbers also coming out from Taylor Wimpy, the home builder, uh, during the week. Uh, we have a number of in US um, economic reports. This week, we have US CPI, we have the beige book, and we also have the retail sales. Now, the retail sales is going to be probably the one that's going to be most in focus. You know, it's going to be for the month of December. Therefore, people are going to be looking, were American consumers in the year of the COVID-19 crisis, were they have to go out and spend money at Christmas? Uh, that's going to be the real kind of litmus test for, uh, for, for consumer activity. And uh, speaking of consumer activity, uh, Associated British Foods, the, own, the owner of Primark, um, they have their first quarter numbers coming out on um, on Thursday. Primark is a very successful business. Um, they do they do quite well. They do very well. But the problem is they don't have an online section. Uh, and with that, they're on the, on the front line when it comes to lockdowns. Whereas uh, ASOS, who already mentioned, and Boohoo, who will be coming out in a second, are very prominent on the online fashion sector. Speaking of Boohoo, uh, they also have third quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. They're one of the companies like ASOS that have cleaned up during the pandemic in that <clears throat> they're an online fashion house. Uh, so funds and business that have ordinarily gone on the high street gets directed towards the, um, the, uh, the online business. Uh, Donnell have second quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. Uh, Thursday, we get the preliminary reading of German um, GDP for the entire year of 2020. Um, Tesco have third, have third quarter numbers coming out on Thursday. Keep in mind that, you know, just gone uh, in the last few days, we've had, heard from M&S, we've heard from Sainsbury's, and we've heard from Morrison's. And, you know, a common theme is that, you know, food sales, surprise, surprise, has been, has been, quite, has been, quite, has been quite good. Uh, coming on to the end, towards the end of the week, uh, on Friday we have UK GDP for the month of November and also the services output for the month of November. <coughs> Excuse me. As you, as you approach the very end of the week, uh, we will be kicking off US reporting season. The major US banks, JP Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo and Citigroup will all be posting their fourth quarter numbers. And just keep in mind, uh, in, the, in the most recent quarter, the third quarter, the size of the bad debts provision dropped considerably in comparison with the second quarter for the U.S. banks. So that, that may be kind of a, a kind of common theme. Traders will be wondering, are, are we going to see a continuation of that? <clears throat> or, was, or was it the case that the relatively low numbers for bad debts penciled in in the, second, in the third quarter was actually a mistake? <clears throat> Excuse me. Starting off uh, with the indices, I take a look at the FTSE 100. As I mentioned <coughs> in the video at the very beginning, the FTSE 100 has been in a solid upward trend like other global stock markets. Last week, towards the back end of last week, I racked up a 10 month high. Friday session was relatively muted and today it's a bit lower. And from a charting point of view, it's not exactly a surprise that we're seeing a relatively small range um, the last couple of sessions. The long wick on Thursday's candle indicates a bit of indecision. Now, that's not to say that the market's going to completely turn over on itself, um, but it could just mean that we might see the market trade sideways or the, the upward trend could continue, but at a slower pace. But uh, nonetheless, the market remains in its upward trend. If it continues to press on higher from here, because we're currently trading around 6,848, if it continues to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retaking 6,900. And if you go beyond that, and if you take out uh, the last week's high, um, you know, 6,957. If you go beyond that, we could then be looking up, looking up towards 7,000. Uh, any moves to the downside could find support in this general zone here, um, 6,600 or north of it, up towards 6,678. So this entire belt here could act as support should we see a move lower. And even if you go below that, we could look at heading back down towards this blue line here, the fifth day moving average, which comes into play at 6,386. And notice how it acted nicely as both, well, both resistance and also support uh, in early November. So if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. As I mentioned at the top of the video, the, the DAX hit a record high um, back in the last week on Friday. Um, it's not a huge surprise that we're seeing a bit of a pullback today. And if we really focus in on this particular candle, uh, we can see here uh, Monday's candle. Obviously, today hasn't, uh, today's 
candle hasn't finished yet because today's trading session hasn't finished yet but it looks if you look at the shape of this candle so far so far this candle this today's candle has the potential to be a daily bearish reversal uh, in that we can see that the body of the candle here um, this kind of red rectangle completely engulfs um, so far is completely engulfing uh, yet the, the positive candle that we saw on Friday so should that be the case should we you know, close firmly below um, the open of last Friday and should the, should the red rectangle entirely engulf uh, the, the, the previous day's positive um, candle we could that could be an indication that we're going to see a bit of a pullback in the near term and should that be the case we could look heading back down toward this zone here down around 13,600 uh, and if you have a fairly decent move below that, it could take us back down towards uh, back down towards 13,000 itself. So if you head back lower, we could be heading towards 13,600. And even if you have a fairly decent move to the downside, we could look at heading back down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 13,221. Uh, keep in mind, the broader trend is very much the upside. Upside, like I said, we posted a record high on Friday, so you know, let's not forget the wider trend is very much to the upside. So if we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at retaking uh, fourteen thousand, and if, and if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at you know re retesting the kind of the all-time highs, kind of up around fourteen thousand one hundred and thirty-four, and then beyond that, looking towards fourteen thousand two hundred, three hundred, and so on and so forth. I'll take a look now what's going on over in the US. Similar scenario, very bullish, very bullish moves recently seen in US indices. All time highs were achieved on Friday. Uh, we can see here on Friday's candle, we did it and an, an all time high was hit. But the relative given that they, the wick on Friday's candle is fairly long, it could have not have been of indecision. Once again, not to say that the market's going to completely turn over on itself, but it could be a sign that we might see a bit of sideways trading for a while. Or we could be the case that the upward trend continues, but just at a lower pace. But then again, there's also the possibility it could have a bit of a pullback. And should it pull back, uh, it could look heading back down toward this area here, around 30,271. And if you go below that, keep an eye out for the kind of psychologically important 30,000. But you know, let's not lose sight of the fact that the market's in a very strong upward trend. A record high was hit only in the, in the previous trading tra trading session. So um, let, let's let, let's keep that in mind. Um, so if we can move higher from here, and if we retake Friday's high, we know we then be in, in, the, in the territory of, of uh, new all-time highs. And when you're in the territory of hitting new all-time highs, the more the more all-time highs you hit, the more likely you are going to continue to keep, keep racking up record gains. It's a similar situation with the S&P 500. All-time high was achieved on Friday. We pulled back ever so slightly in, in today's session. Um, if we continue to press on higher from here, and if we retake uh, Friday's high, we could then be, you know, heading up towards, you know, in the more kind of medium term, in the direction of 3,900. Uh, any kind of decent pullbacks that we see in the S&P 500 could find support from this zone here, down around 3,700. And if you do have a fairly sizable pullback, we could look at heading back down towards this blue line here. The fifth the movie average in at 3,637, and if you, even if you go below that, the lows of um, give a look at retesting the lows of late November in at 3,594. So one of the kind of themes, or one of the kind of big kind of themes in the currency markets in the last few sessions has been a turnaround in the U.S. dollar. And probably best shown here on the on euro dollar, whereby it wasn't that long ago, only, la only last week, we saw euro dollar hit its highest level in over two and a half years, and then we've had a couple of, we've had a few negative days in a row. And if you look at the, at the, the candle um, on Thursday, we can see that, that the body of this red candle here, this red rect rectangle, completely engulfs that of the, the positive body. Uh, of the daily candle on Wednesday, so it could be that this this seems to me this could be a bearish daily reversal. We have, we have been moving lower, which is, is kind of adds weight 
to the view that it is a daily bullish reversal. And if you continue to move lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the lows of early, well, late December in at one spot, 2129. And if you have a break below that, you can look at head back down towards the lows in early December um, in around one spot, 2058. And then below that, keep an eye on the kind of psychology of one spot, 20 mark. Now, um, the market has been in a fairly strong upper trend the last few months. So this isn't to say that, you know, you know, a daily bullish reversal is may not necessarily lead to a complete turnaround of the currency pair. It could just mean that we have a sizable pullback before the broader trend continues. And should that be the case, we could then be looking at retesting the highs of the of well, only last week at one spot, 2349. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards one spot 2480. And keep in mind, we haven't seen one spot 2480 since March 2018. Take a look now at pound dollar now. It's a similar situation in that a pound dollar hit its highest level in over two and a half years, and then we've been drifting lower. But the move to the downside in pound dollar hasn't been as aggressive as the move to the downside in euro dollar has. So similar situation here. Um, whereby uh, only this day last week hit its highest level in over two and a half years. It's been moving lower um, ever, ever since. Um, if you continue to, to drift lower, we could be looking at retesting the lows of late December in at one spot 34.29. If you go below that, you could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at one spot 33.55. And notice how on a couple of occasions um, in December and, and, and the 11th and also the 21st, 50 day moving average acted nicely as support. Now, granted, the, the, uh, the currency pair drifted ever so slightly below it, but nonetheless, it acted nicely as support. And as I said before, if a, if a metric has been significant in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be uh, of significance in the future. But once again, let's not forget the broader upward trend that's been in play. So if we continue to, if the kind of upward trend continues and it resumes, if we, if we, if we manage to retest and retake, uh, the highs that we're seeing in January, we can then be looking at targeting one spot 37.92. And similar situation, we haven't seen one spot 37.92 since, we haven't seen that metric since um, April 2018. And if you go beyond that level of one spot 37.92, we could then be looking at heading up towards 140. Tying in with the strength of the US dollar, uh, and until recently, the very strong the strong move seen uh, in global stock markets. I will take a look at gold because gold is traded in US dollars lately. Um, gold, like other major commodities, oils, um, oils, copper, platinum, palladium are traded in dollars. But more recently, the, there's been a strong inverse relationship between gold and the US dollar. So whenever there's been a decent move to, in, in any direction in, in the dollar, that's often impacted gold. And part of the reason why gold has such a negative day on Friday was partially because of the overall uh, risk on sentiment. Stock markets are doing well, as we just saw. So traders were, were less interested in assets that are deemed to be low risk. But on top of that, the turnaround and the rebound that we've seen in the US dollar made, as, um, has, has made dollars more expensive, therefore has made it more expensive to buy gold. So we've seen extra pressure put on the US dollar on, on the gold market on Friday. We had a very aggressive um, move to the downside. You can see that it closed above its 200 moving average. Today's session, so far, there's a very long wick on this candle, which indicates, once again, indecision. So it seems to me like the market's trying to figure out which way do we go. If we hold above the 200 moving average in 1837, because we're currently at 1850, if we can hold above that, you know, the kind of uptrend that we've seen since December uh, is likely to continue. And, and should we can move higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this yellow line here, the one really moving average at 1892. And if you take out that level, and if you take out 1900, we could then be looking up towards the highs of early January in 1859. Um, it is worth noting, though, that we've, you know, the broader trend for the last few months, you know, gold hit a record high in August, but ever since then, it's been trending lower, what like we've seen, <coughs> excuse me, a lower low, a lower high, Excuse me, a lower low, a lower high. So the trend for the last few months has been to the downside, although in the more near term, the trend has been higher. So if gold does move lower, and we take out, say, the, the um, take out 1800, 
We can then be looking at retesting the lows of late November uh, in an 18, sorry, 1764. And if you go below that, we could then be looking at targeting, targeting the, the lows of late of late of um of late June, uh, which come into play in at 1747. And lastly, coming on to oil, starting at take, taking a look at Brent crude oil. <clears throat> so Brent crude oil has been a strong upward trend. The overall kind of bullish sentiment of the market has been a factor in it, but the real driver uh, was the recent announcement last week that Saudi Arabia uh, volunteered to cut output uh, in March, sorry, in February and March by 1 million barrels per day. So that really uh, jolted uh, the energy market to the upside. Only on Friday, a fresh 10-month high was achieved. And in fact, and even in today's, the early hours of today's session, uh, looks like the, the new 10-month high was achieved. So we're still very much in the upward trend. Currently, we're kind of off the highs of the session. It's not entirely a shock to see a bit of ebb and flow, but the overall trend is positive. We're currently trading at 55 spot 32. If the broad upward trend continues, we could be looking at targeting at 60 bucks per barrel. That'll be like the next big psychological number to keep an, keep an eye Keep in mind, we haven't seen that metric really since the middle of February, so just around the time the COVID-19 crisis was becoming a major factor for the West. If we do drift lower in the oil market, we could look at heading back down towards 52 or the lows of early January in around 50 spot 57 and 50 spot 53. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, have a good, that, that's all from this video. Have a good training week and good luck.